Welcome to the Primo Analytics Dashboards and Reports tutorial. Primo Analytics is designed to provide us information about how our patrons, staff, and faculty are using Primo. Since we're probably going to be looking for the same or similar information each time we come to Primo Analytics, it's possible to save different types of analyses so that we can run them over and over again. It's also possible to display this data in a meaningful way. Dashboards provide us with a way to organize and display the results of these analyses. They can include graphs that help us interpret usage information, and they can present the data itself in tables that the user can sort. If you have your own personal login into the Primo back office, you'll also have your own dashboard that you can customize. If I click on my dashboard right now, you'll see that I have not yet created my own dashboard. In the Primo Analytics Copying and Analysis to My Dashboard tutorial, we will see how to start putting analytics here. In the Primo folder, we have two out-of-the-box dashboards available, the Example Dashboard and the Trends Dashboard. We learned in the introductory session that these dashboards are created and edited by Xlibris, and customers can only view them, not change them. In the Primo Community folder, we have several dashboards that members of our Primo community are sharing. For this tutorial, I would like to go to the Example Dashboard. When I first come to the Example Dashboard, we can see that I have several tabs or pages. In the first page, I can see the results of several analyses, with both the raw data and a graphic representation of that data. Keep in mind that the dashboard is the framework that is used to display these reports. In other words, the dashboard can show us one report, or it can show a whole series of reports. If I go to the Trends dashboard, I'll be seeing a different set of reports on a different set of pages. Let's learn more about the out-of-the-box reports that are showing in the example dashboard. Reports are responses that returned after executing a query or an analysis. Reports can be formatted and presented on the dashboard page, saved, and shared with other users. The Actions page is the first page in the example dashboard. The first report is Search Actions. This report is a monthly report of the number of actions taken by end users related to search. On the left, we have a graph that shows the number of times certain actions were taken. If I mouse over one of the data points, I can see the month, the action that's being taken, in this case, basic search, and the number of times that action was taken that month. Keep in mind that this data is coming from our training server, so it may not always reflect typical usage. In April, it looks like basic search was used 768 times. Advanced search was only used 30 times. On the right-hand side, I have a table that shows me the data that is in the graph. If I mouse over the month, I'm given the option to sort this data in ascending or descending order. I can do the same to the actions themselves. Notice that there's a prompt above the table. Right now, it's set to count. If I click on the drop-down and select percentage, the count turns to percentages. So viewing the count shows the scale or magnitude of the number of actions whereas the percentage shows how each data point compares to the others. For example, in April 2016, 95.9% of the time users were using basic search in Primo. 3.7% of the time they were using advanced search, and so on. Let's take a look at the second report on this page, Results List Actions. Results List Actions gives us a monthly report of the number of actions taken by end users related to search results. In other words, what actions were users taking after they received the results of their search? 
Were they using a facet to filter their results? Were they moving to the next page? Were they expanding their search results in Primo? In October 2015, we can see that users used the facets to filter their results 153 times. They clicked on the next page 56 times. And they removed facet filters 25 times. On the right, again I can see the raw data counts for each month, and I can also see the data represented in percentages. The next report is Document Level Actions. This is a monthly report of actions taken by end users related to the document or resource. So what were users doing with their search results? Were they clicking on the View It tab? Were they clicking on the Details tab or the title of the record itself? In April 2016, I can see they clicked on the title 122 times, the Details tab 303 times, and so on. Over here on the right, I can see all of the different types of document level actions available and how many times those actions were taken. And again, I can also see those numbers as a percentage. The last report on this page is General Actions. This is a monthly report of the number of actions taken by end users related to general actions like signing in, signing out, going to the My Account area, and so on. Let's take a look at the second page of the dashboard called Devices. There is only one report on this page, and it has to do with the types of devices that are used to access Primo. Right now, our training server is only accessed by PCs using Windows. I can select a different month in the prompt here, and if I select April, I can see which browsers were used to access Primo. If someone used a Mac, an iPad, or other tablet, or even a mobile device to access Primo, that usage would show here in this report. The next page of the dashboard, Facets, shows a report that displays the number of times specific facets were used in each month. For example, I can see back in October 2015, the top-level facets were used 66 times. The resource type was used 22 times, and so on. I can see all of the facets listed in both the graph and the table. Notice that there are several local facets present in my data. Keep in mind that if you're creating local facets, the label of those facets will not appear in this report. On the next page, we have a report that shows the monthly number of sessions divided by location. Our training server gets most of its usage in the United States, but we do also have trainees in Brazil, France, Germany, and other countries. The popular searches page includes two reports. The report on the left side shows the search terms that were used in the last full month, and we can see previous months by using the prompt dropdown. For example, in October 2016, library was searched for eight times, and that search produces over 22 million results in Primo. I can also see whether or not users were signed in when they conducted the search. The report on the right shows search terms and the total number of times they were searched for since the beginning of the year. It also shows the number of results that search produced and how many times users were signed in when they conducted those searches. On the Zero Results Search page, I can see searches that did not produce any results. Usually these results contain exact article titles and numeric identifiers. The Pipes page displays a report listing the pipes that ran for this institution. Keep in mind we do not run a daily update pipe in our training environment, 
So for your institution, most likely you will have a lot more data in this report. This report is helpful in studying and analyzing your data loading processes. For example, how many records are usually in your daily update, and how long do they take to process? And finally, in the PNX records page, we have a monthly report of the number of PNX records per data source. We can also use the prompt at the top left of the screen to see the number of Ferber groups in each data source, as well as the number of dedupe groups. Again, the results of your reports will look a bit different than the results here on the training server. Thank you for watching Primo Analytics Dashboards and Reports. In the example dashboard, we've captured the nature of the data that's being gathered in Primo. However, you may find that your library needs to display or interpret these types of data in a different way. That's why it's possible to create your own dashboards and reports. To learn more about copying, editing, and creating new reports and dashboards, please continue on to the next tutorial, Copying and Analysis to My Dashboard.